Now we're ready to sketch polynomials. Oh, with everything we know, let's bring it all together. To sketch a graph of a polynomial, we're gonna try to be as accurate as we can be. So first, let's take an inventory of everything we know about the polynomial. Let's look at example one. First, let's find the highest order term. My highest order term is 2x cubed, so that means I have a cubic. Let's find the end behavior. Okay, I've got a positive leading coefficient, so I know I'm gonna end positive up towards positive infinity, and I have an odd degree, so odd opposite, so I'm gonna start down negative infinity. So my end behavior is down, up, negative infinity, infinity. Let's find the y-intercept, plugging in zero for x. Zero, negative four. Did you write your y-intercept as a point? <laughs> X-intercepts and their multiplicities. Okay, take a moment, see if you beat me. So I used zero product property, got x equals two, so two zero, multiplicity one, so that's gonna be a cross because it's odd, and then I got negative one, zero, multiplicity two, so multiplicity is even, so that's gonna be a bounce. Be careful, it's the multiplicity that's even or odd, not the intercept itself. Max number of turning points. Do you remember how to do that? One less than the degree. One less than the degree. So my degree is three, so my max number of turning points could be two. Oh boy, we just took our inventory, so we're ready to graph, okay. Now graphing, we know so much already, so graphing we can really do in two quick steps. Here we go, I'm gonna write down my graphing steps. I suggest you do too. Step one to graphing, plot our intercepts. Okay, well I've got x-intercepts at two zero and negative one zero. Now I'm gonna put a little c next to the crosses and b next to the bounces so that I don't forget. Step two is to plot my end behavior and connect my graph. So my end behavior is down up. So when my x's are really, really small, my graph's headed towards negative infinity. When my x's are getting really, really big, my graph is headed towards positive infinity. Okay, so now we gotta connect this. So I'm gonna connect from left to right. So I'm starting down here at negative infinity. I'm headed up to that x-intercept. That x-intercept is a bounce. So I'm not gonna cross through it like that. I'm gonna bounce off of it. So that helps me because then I can head down to my y-intercept. Now here's where I'm not really sure what happens to the graph. I could either head straight up to my next x-intercept or I could head down first and then head straight up. So since I'm not sure, I'm going to go ahead and head straight up to that x-intercept. There's a c, so that one's going to be a cross, so I get to cross through it. Great, because then I can head up and finish my end behavior. Now, if I'm going for the best possible sketch here, what I really could do is what I like to call a reality check. I could plug in that value where I feel like I made a guess. So right here, so I wasn't sure what's gonna happen right there at x equals one. Well, if I wanna know, I can just plug one into my equation and figure out where the y value is supposed to be. Well, sure enough, my guess was wrong. At one, I'm supposed to be down at negative eight. That's way down here. So I could adjust my graph to make my sketch even more precise. Now that I have a pretty good sketch here, let's go back and finish up actual number of turning points. Well, I have one, two, so two turning points, and the number and type of extrema. Well, let's check this out. I got a max, a local max, right there, and then I also have a local min right here. Do we have an absolute? No ceiling, no floor, nope. Example B, go ahead and find the highest order term and then fill in what you can from that. Pause the video. Negative one fourth x to the sixth. So we have a six degree polynomial. End behavior, well the leading coefficient is negative so we know the end of the story is down. Even degree, so they behave the same. Let's do our x-intercepts and multiplicities. So we see that we're gonna bounce at zero, zero. The other two are gonna cross. Now zero, zero is an x-intercept, but zero, zero, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are zero. Well, it's also my y-intercept. 
If you already figured out the y-intercept the other way, just plugging in zero for x, well, 1 fourth times zero squared is zero times anything else is going to be zero. If it's six degree, I can have at most five turning points. Doesn't mean I will, just means I could. Now that the inventory's done, it's time to plot the points. Be sure and put a b next to that bounce. I have the points plotted and I went ahead and put in the end behavior and now we're ready to connect. Remember, we're starting down, negative infinity, moving on up. Moving on up to the top. Does yours look kind of like mine? Okay, keep in mind that we really could use a reality check here. We honestly don't know how high we should have gone in between those x-intercepts. But we're going to leave it here just as a sketch. Just know if we want a more accurate sketch, we can plug in x values, get y values, and do a much better job. Are there any relative mins or maxes? Write down how many. Two relative max, one relative min. What about an absolute? Do we have a global extrema? Is there a ceiling? Is there a floor? Or are we crashing through? We definitely have a ceiling, so there is an absolute max. Pause the video and try the third example. All right, are you just pro at this or what? Check this graph. <laughs> I'm losing it. It's like, am I gonna? No. It's this. That's down.